Hi guys, how are you doing today? I hope everybody's keeping up with the lessons. Um, so I know it's been a couple of weeks since we had lessons. I wanted you to take your time and master those things. Um, this next lesson on page 29, we have three new skills. So we're gonna break it up over two lessons, okay? So we'll have lots of review today, whoopsie. We'll have lots of review today and we'll do the first two skills and then in the next lesson, we'll do the third thing on page 29 with more review. Um, so have fun with it, enjoy yourself. Um, so this is last time I had my friend Bilbo Bunny. This is Frodo, Fro Frodo the Frog. And so he's gonna watch my posture, make sure everything's um, looking the way that it should. And um, so there's that. The bonus video of the week is uh, some American um, uh, bluegrass favorites. Uh, there's a link in the description below. And um, I had a guest artist with me this time. My brother played guitar with me. Um, so enjoy it. Have fun with it. And uh, the trivia question of the week. We had, um, well, okay, so we, uh, in the in intermediate class, we have learned of two composers who lost their hearing during their career. So for you guys, I want to see if you can do some research and find uh, the second one uh, that we learned about. So uh, there are two composers, two pretty famous composers who lost their hearing during their careers. The first one is the one everybody knows about, Ludwig von Beethoven, a German composer. The second one is a Russian composer um, that we've talked about. So see if you can find out the name of the Russian composer who lost his hearing during his career. All right. And have your parents email or text it to me and you'll get a mention in next time's videos. All right. So let's start with tuning. Here's your A. And here's your D. And your G. And E. All right, great. <clears throat> so now that you're all tuned up, we're gonna start with our finger exercises that we went over last time. Uh, we're gonna do them on all four strings. It's our red finger pattern is what we call it, okay? <clears throat> all right, so here we go. I'm gonna start on the E string and do it twice, then go to the A string, then the D, then the G. All right, so try and keep up with me. Hopefully you're practicing this every day. Here we go. here for now he doesn't sit as well as Bilbo Bunny and he kept falling down before all right so we're gonna start our review and warm-up with Ode to Joy uh, it's on your page 23 song number 86 all right so I'll give you a second to find it all right and then for these review songs just play along with me and if you need to rewind and try again or if you want to listen first and then play use that rewind and pause buttons they are your friends okay they'll help you get through these exercises and as usual you can always have your parents text or email me if you have any questions um, or if you want to have somebody record you playing something and send it to me I miss you guys a lot and I would love to hear you play all right so here we go we're gonna do number 86 ode to joy
Awesome. Okay. Uh, next, we're going to move on to Can Can number 92. It's on your page 25. So just turn one page. Can Can. And I'm going to go a little bit on the faster side. You should have mastered this by now. So it should be easy to go kind of fast. Um, remember our original recording that we looked up. Of course, you can look up these original recordings too. Um, the piece actually goes very fast. And this is the piece by Jacques Offenbach. He was our trivia question last time. Um, and his instrument was the cello. Uh, he also studied violin, but he switched to cello and that was what he made his career playing uh, besides composing. All right, here we go. Can Can, number 92. One, two, ready, go. <laughs> All right, great job. And remember, when you play that with me, you can play the B part too, and you can harmonize. Um, all right. Next, we have, whoops, wrong page. This old man, all right? And this is from our page 27, so just turn one more page. And this was um, one of the songs, it was a quiz, and it's practicing the notes on the G string. All right, so let's give it a try. And again, you can go faster with this one. If you've ever learned how to sing the song, it goes pretty fast. This old man, he played one. He played knick-knack on my thumb with a knick-knack paddywhack. Give a dog a bone. This old man came rolling home. All right, so that's the speed that we, um, we want to go is up with the words. But we're not going to go that fast today. All right, here we go. One, two, three, four. <laughs> And you can also play around with that by starting it on um, other strings, right? So you could play it on the D string, use the same fingers, just play it on the D string. <laughs> different sound and other people can um, sing along with you while you play. All right, we're going to move on to page 28 now and we're going to play the, um, the sailor song. Uh, this is another essential elements quiz for counting in three, right? So that was our new skill on page 28 um, was counting and conducting in three. If you remember, Susie was my helper for that one. All right, and I have a weird page turn here, so I got to memorize it real quick. Okay, I think I got it. All right, so Sailor's Song. Oops, I forgot to tell you the number of that one. That is 107 on page 28. Okay. Um, and again, this one goes pretty fast too. It's a sea, a sea shanty um, from like pirates and stuff, uh, sailors in the 17 and 1800s. All right, here we go. One, two, three, ready, go. <laughs> wasn't too bad. I did go kind of fast, uh, but I think you can do it. All right, and now we are to page 29, which is our new material. Um, like I said, we have three new skills on this page, and we're going to just kind of take our time because they can be tricky and they can be frustrating mentally. All right, so bear with me here. Um, the first orange box on your page should look something like 
this where it talks about ties, okay? Now, you'll see a tie is this little smiley face thing that connects the notes, all right? And what that means is kind of like a plus sign in math, okay? When you have the notes that stay on the same pitch and they have this smiley face connecting them, it's like one plus one equals two, okay? So you're gonna play it like a half note. When you have two quarter notes that have a tie there, you're gonna play them like a half note with no stops, no extra pulses or anything. We use other markings to tell us when to do that. But when it's just the smiley face, sometimes it's a frowny face, depending on which way the stems are going, right? But when you have just that curved line connecting the notes, you're gonna play it like a two beat note. So if we look at number 108, <clears throat> the first note is a D half note. Here, I'll hold up the music again. So we're talking about the same thing. All right, so the first note is a D half note. The second note there is the E quarter note, E quarter note with the tie connecting them. So we're gonna play D, E, okay, F sharp. So now we have the tie again, G, A half note, G, A, okay? <clears throat> and make sure when you play that A, you use your fourth finger like it indicates right there. All right, so you notice those all sounded like half notes. And then the second line, we're gonna follow the same procedure and play the half notes. <clears throat> and the tied quarter notes are gonna sound just like half notes. All right, so I'll play it for you. And maybe this first time, follow along with the music and then pause and rewind and try and play it with me, okay? And if you have trouble with the notes, remember to use your four steps of learning the song, right? The first step is to clap and sing the note names. The second step is to practice it pizzicato. And when you pizzicato ties, it's the same as with the bow. You just pizzicato like it's a half note, okay? <clears throat> the third is to practice your bow on your shoulder while you're saying the note names. And the fourth step then is to put everything together. Be careful not to skip those steps because they're all really important in helping your brain sort out what you need to do. Eventually you'll get to the point where you don't need to slow down and go that, you know, step by step by step. But for now, it's really important to follow the steps and train your brain, okay? All right, so here we go. 108, fit to be tied. One, two, here we go. circle. All right. Great job. So now the next orange box. So I have to put my instrument down. So I have two hands. <clears throat> so the next orange box is introducing something that looks similar to the tie, and it's called a slur. And the difference is we change pitches, okay? So your bow is gonna make a half note stroke, but your left hand is going to change notes, all right? So, for example, if I had two quarter note Ds tied together, just like in the last exercise, okay, it would sound like this. Okay, you see my bow is making a half note and my left hand is not changing. Okay, now if I have a D and then an E and they're connected with a slur, just like in that orange box example, my bow is still gonna make a half note, but my left hand changes, okay? So it's this, but we're doing it in one bow stroke. Okay, so it's going to take your brain time to process not changing direction. All right, so have patience with yourself and keep trying this exercise, okay? So 109, stop and go. Use the rest time to think through it as you're playing. All right, so the first measure is D to E with a slur. Rest, rest. The next measure, we're going to go up bow and go E to D with a slur. Rest, 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 rest. All right, 
Now, please have patience with yourself, okay? And if you have trouble doing that right out of the gate, there is an in-between step that you can do. Okay, I've had mixed success with it, so that's why I don't always introduce it right away. Okay, some people are able to do the slurs, no problem, and some people get confused by the in-between step. But I'm going to give it to you so that you can have this tool to use to help if you need it. So, <clears throat> when you're learning slurs or when you're practicing slurs, now, and I do do this even with some of my advanced pieces, okay? Sometimes I have to train my arm to do it the proper way. Or when I get new bowing instructions from the concertmaster and orchestra, Sometimes I have to slow down and I have to stop my bow in between the notes of the slur so that I can practice doing it in the right direction. So that's a trick that you can do. So if I were doing that with this exercise, I would stop my bow and I would go rest, 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 okay? Then after I'm comfortable with that, I'll smooth out my bow stroke, rest, 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 okay? And that just tricks your brain into remembering that they're two separate notes, but connected bow strokes, okay? You're reprogramming your brain to do something different from what we've been doing the whole school year. So this takes time, it takes patience, but I know you can do it, all right? I don't wanna overwhelm you, so that's why we are breaking this down into two different lessons for this exercise, because um, the next set is can also be tricky, and it um, focuses on a different part of your bowing. So we're going to go ahead and do number 110, slurring along, and then that'll be it for today. All right, here we go. 110. One, two, ready, go. Rest, rest. Rest, rest. Rest, rest. Rest, rest. I made a mistake. It should be a dotted half note. So one, two, three, rest. Okay. All right. Good job. We'll play these again in the next lesson and um, good luck with the exercises. I'm sure you can do it. You're going to be fine. Um, there was something. Else. Oh, I remember the other thing I was going to say. Don't forget to sign up for summer camp. Okay. So beginners, you'll go ahead and sign up for intermediate camp. Um, and that'll be with the advanced kids as well. And you'll get to do some uh, mixing and matching, kind of like we did for our uh, SCATS performance. Um, so everybody will get a turn and do some harmony. Maybe we'll make some arrangements of something. We'll have fun. All right. So check that out on the Oakwood School website. And um, see you later. Have a great day. Bye.